what people probably don't know is that Cy Hirsch couldn't get that story out, that he wrote, uh, submitted it to New York Times, Washington Post, etc., and it was not accepted. Um, and that he had to work with his brother, who was a recent law graduate, uh, to set up effectively a fake newswire service um, and then as part of their initial product um, uh, hand that out to regional, news uh, regional newspapers. And that's how the Milo massacre was broken by, if you like, um, working out a clever hack um, uh, for the media system. Now, we ha have a, a different way and different sorts of technology uh, to get out stories that would otherwise not be uh, revealed to the public. For this particular case, um, there was uh, an assassination squad I discovered, uh, Task Force 373, that is working its way down a kill capture list of uh, at least 2,000 people um, called the JPEL, Joint Priority Effects List, uh, and the PEL, um, sorry, and the JEL, Joint Effects List. Uh, and <coughs> that story was the, became the cover of the Spiegel uh, and was mentioned extensively in The Guardian, but did not appear in the New York Times. Uh, however, that story was written by Eric Schmidt, a New York Times reporter, but it was not used. Now, Bill Keller, the editor of the New York Times, tells me that, well, they had done something about this a little bit before and they wanted to do something later and space constraints, etc. So maybe there was a good reason to not publish that story. But the Spiegel thought it was important enough to make it the cover of their magazine, and yet it was not mentioned at all in New York Times. Uh, Task Force 444 and Task Force 42, British equivalents, Special Forces Assassination Squads operating in Afghanistan. They were revealed by the Sunday Times, based upon our data. Uh, the journalist <coughs> Stephen Gray, whose most famous book is Ghost Plane, which is about renditions, he took that data and worked on it. What people here do not know, and what the general public does not know, is that Stephen Gray had discovered Task Force 444 and Task Force 42 uh, over a year ago and had attempted to put them in his book about Afghanistan. However, they were under a D-notice, a censorship order, by the British government and his publisher forced him to remove them. The Sunday Times was aware of that censorship order as well but could successfully argue that because we had already made the information public, they could report on it. So we are creating a, a space uh, for others to follow. We are giving license, for example, for the Sunday Times uh, to report uh, where it could not report before. Yes, please, over, over there at the, the end. Uh, thank you for an, for an interesting talk. talk. My name is Håkan Andersson, lawyer and social democrat. I'm just wondering, um, how do you ascertain the provenance sort of the, that these are actual documents uh, or actual, the, the truthfulness of the documents that you receive? Yeah. So, you know, so, some people schooled in traditional journalism they say to us, well, how do you verify your sources uh, if you don't know who they are? And we say, well, we never verify sources. We don't do that. We verify documents. Uh, and I think that is, in fact, a much higher standard because, say, for example, Judith Miller at the New York Times, who famously uh, reported false information about uh, collaboration between Saddam Hussein and al-Qaeda shortly before the Iraq War in 2003, she verified her sources uh, within the US administration. However, her sources were passing her fake documents. So don't verify sources, verify what people say uh, or what the actual documents are. And to date, uh, we have never been wrong as far as we know, uh, and no one else in fact alleges uh, that we have been wrong in any, in any instance. We have a, 
an easier task than most journalists in that we only deal with official documents. So we have become specialists in how to verify official documents and official documents are actually very hard uh, to fabricate in a good way. If you're talking about hundreds of pages, for an example, the economic cost and the, the opportunity cost for someone to do that fabrication is high um, and the chance of it being d discovered by us is high. Uh, and then because we release all our primary source material, the opponents of that document and the general public will rip it to shreds. And there's no doubt that if Judith Miller had revealed her primary source material for those articles that she wrote about in the New York Times, which facilitated the invasion of Iraq, the Iraqi government would have been very highly motivated to tear them to shreds. So would any of its allies, and so would people, academics and others, who oppose the war. So releasing primary source material is a, a way of creating some discipline um, on journalists and on people who provide journalists with documents. Now, I could go on at length, we, go, we do forensics and all sorts of things on these documents, but um, in the end it's not so hard, actually. You just call up the organisation uh, and say, y is it yours? And the answer is yes, no, or maybe. We've only had no on two occasions, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, we've had yes, but it's not what you think. On very many occasions was an attempt to spin the issue. Um, and we've had, we won't tell you uh, quite a bit from intelligence organisations. We won't tell you either way. It's a matter of policy, we never say that. That's absolute nonsense. I mean, uh, they will tell you um, if, if it's framed in the right way. And one of the ways to deal with that, uh, if you're dealing with intelligence organisation, is you don't talk about the document, you talk about the facts in the document. Is it true that on this particular date, such and such happened? Uh, and then if the organisation refuses to speak about that event, um, then they are rightly seen as attempting to um, conceal information from the public or being du duplicitous. So they are in fact reluctant to do that. Um, and once you establish enough facts that are true from w with a document, within a document, then you put the question about the whole document. Um, and if, if you've established the facts uh, in the document that it's true, well, you go with your sort of journalistic gut instinct and say, well, of course the whole thing is true. There would be no per point in, in where all the facts were true, but the document itself was not true. Thank you very much, Julian. May I put a, a final question before we make a, a break and allow for, for, for a short press conference as well? Uh, as you have mentioned, the, the, the Swedish uh, rules and regulation and laws regarding uh, media are very strong. And, and, and as Swedes, we are also very proud of our, uh, that everyone uh, has a right of, of access to, to all information, for example, and also the, the strong protection of sources, which gives enormous power, of course, to, to, to media. And, and following that, there's also strong self-regulation uh, of, of media in Sweden. So it, it's, a, it's a bit particular climate, and you mentioned that this is, uh, uh, this is a, a friendly environment to, to, to do this kind of work. Could we foresee a, a closer relation in the future between uh, WikiLeaks and, and, and Sweden? Well, I, I'm not sure how much closer it could be. <laughs> um, Will you come more frequently? <laughs> well, I mean, we, we have people here. We're in setting up a, a, a journalistic office here. Um, um, I am now a columnist for Aftonblad. I mean, um, how much closer could it be? Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, th there, will, there is an issue, as, actually, uh, as we have more money and resources, where do we want our primary office to be? And, of course, uh, in the summer, I would say Sweden for sure. <laughs> but I've also been here in the winter, so I'm not so... I think we all need at least two, right? I think that's quite accurate. Uh, thank you very much, Julian, for giving this interesting uh, seminar and allowing for, for, for the questions. Uh, we will now make a, a short break and uh, allow the possibility for, for the journalists here to also to, to uh, ask more questions if, if, 
there, there is a need for that. But thank you very much, Julie. Thank you.